Hi, I'm Rob Cos and welcome to my shop. Keeping your crosscut saw sharp, a lot of folks think it's difficult. Actually, it's quite simple. I'm gonna keep it very simple and very easy. Stay with me, I'll show you how. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. I'm gonna sharpen my crosscut saw. This is designed to cut across the grain. So unlike a rip saw, which is designed to go parallel to the grain, this is cut a little bit differently or cuts a little bit differently and the teeth are shaped a little bit differently. I'm not gonna go in and talk to you about setting the teeth or topping them or anything like that. We're just gonna go in, gonna keep it very simple and we're just gonna sharpen it up so that it cuts really nicely. We'll save all that work for another video. And before you start, you wanna make sure that you have a saw that you can actually sharpen the teeth. Here's what I mean. A lot of the hand saws that you buy today with the plastic handles that you buy at the big box stores have hardened teeth. They're designed literally to be tossed when they're dull. You're not going to be able, able to even scratch those teeth with a regular file. There's lots of old saws out there. There's a few premium companies still making nice saws, but it's difficult to get them. They're just, uh, they seem to be back ordered forever. So as long as you have a saw that's in relatively good shape, meaning if you look down the tooth line, it's not bumping and weaving and going all over the place. What I'm gonna show you in this video is applicable and it'll just show you how to keep that in good shape until it comes time that you have to do some serious surgery on it. I'm gonna go ahead and start by taking the handle off of this, just gonna make it a little bit easier to fit in my vise. So the first big question that most everyone have, has or asked is, when do I sharpen? When do I know I need to sharpen? And there's a couple of ways to determine that. The first one I would think is obvious, and that is you're sawing and the saw is just not performing. It seems like it's just wearing away at the wood instead of cutting it. It may start to wander or drift to one side or the other, but it, it doesn't have that nice crisp feel. Now, if you've never used a really sharp saw, that's kind of a difficult um, thing to imagine, a crisp feel, but you can tell when it really bites and when it just has a tendency to ride over the wood. Another way you can tell is just run your fingers on the teeth carefully, and if it's sharp, it's really prickly. If it's, not, if it's not sharp, you can almost imagine running your hand down there and not cutting it. It just does not bite. And the third way, if you have some magnifiers, if you can see the points, it's not sharp. And when it is nice and sharp, and the two sides of each tooth come to that apex, you shouldn't be able to see it because there's no space there for the light to reflect on. But as I look on this, I can see the points, so I know it's time to be sharpened. Okay, let's explain first what we're doing, in case you don't know. So this is what we would call a rip saw. This is the tooth configuration. This is the tooth configuration on a cross cut. So uh, we we did a video recently on cross cut. Uh, pardon me, sharpening a rip saw, and we'll leave a link to that. Characteristics of a rip saw are the tooth that does the cutting. So I'm, I would be pushing the saw in this direction. This tooth is typically about 90 degrees or zero degrees, I should say, from the saw itself. So it's not back, it's not forward. And across the face of the tooth, if you were to put a square on there, that would be square. There's no fleam or there's no angle on this face. The crosscut tooth, however, and it goes in this direction, or the saw goes like this across the wood. This leans back about 15 degrees. There is a bevel on this side of the tooth, and there's a bevel on that side of the tooth. And those two bevels come together to create a sharp point. And what happens when you're sawing through the wood is, this sharp point leaves a scored line, and this sharp point leaves a scored line. And as it does that, the material in the between just crumbles away as sawdust. And the sharper these teeth are, the nicer that scoring is, and the smoother the cut is going to be. Now, that's, the definition of the cross cut and a rip saw. And we're gonna go through and sharpen a cross cut and mine is a 12 TPI. That means if you were to take one inch, you should be able to count 12 points in there. So this would be considered a relatively fine cross cut saw. Now to explain the file, I'm gonna put my little wooden model in here and use it as a aid. And this is going to be my file, this piece of wood. So it's a triangular file that you're using. 
when you put it in there, what you want to look for, or what, what you need to know to determine that you're using the right size file is the depth of the tooth should not exceed the halfway point of the face of the file. So if I put a mark right here and say, okay, that's the top, and I flip it over like this and put it in, and you see that it doesn't quite come to the same. So that means when I f stroke or file this tooth, the surface that's being used is from here to here. And when I flip it over and I do the other side, I'm not using any of that same area twice. So I'm going to get uh, lots of life out of this file. If instead this point were to cross over the halfway mark, and then I filed the other way and it crossed over the halfway mark, this strip down through the middle of my file would get used more than the rest of it and eventually you're not getting a nice even cut. So you want to make sure that your file, the, the width of the face of your file, is more than twice the depth of the tooth. And in this case, since we're using a 12 TPI, um, or we're sharpening a 12 TPI saw, this, if you're looking for it, is a seven and three quarter needle file, and that is good for down to, or pardon me, as coarse as a 12 TPI up to a 15 TPI. Now, one of the problems with finding files today is there's not a lot of really good ones out there. We searched for four or five years before we finally found a source of really good files. Single biggest diff problem is instead of having nice points or this, these two surfaces coming to a nice point, it's almost rounded over. And what that results in, what you want is a final shape that looks like this instead of something that looks like that. And the files we found now are going to give you this. So if you don't already have one, you need a source, we'll leave a link down below. It, uh, next thing I want to talk about is the vise. And it used to be that you could find saw vices everywhere. Um, again, no, nobody does this anymore, at least not on a professional level. So there's not a lot of that stuff being made. You can still find it in antique stores, but you can also make one. And this is really simple. This is nothing more than a couple pieces of plywood, a piece of piano hinge, and a few bits of hardwood. Uh, we did a video on that as well. I'm putting this in my moxen vise because it allows me to clamp across the entire width of this and it holds the uh, saw securely. I made this one specifically for my smaller hand saws or for my dovetail saw and tenon saw, but I can also use it for this. I took the handle off so that I could, I could go right from one end to the other when it comes to sharpening it. So I'm going to set that in there like so. I've got the teeth sticking up about an eighth of an inch above the top and I'll tighten both sides. And by having it down low, it's not going to allow it to vibrate when I'm sawing or when I'm filing and there's nothing worse than that. All right, now that's ready to go. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our newsletter has subscriber only content, monthly discount on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. You really need to be able to see what you're doing. It's time to change the ball cap for a set of magnifiers. And uh, there's lots of places you can find these. If we can find a link, we'll leave that for you as well. I need a protractor. I've got a couple of angles that are going to be important. I need a, mark, a felt tip marker. It's a lot easier to see what you're doing and to be able to tell what you're, where you've been if you go in and you paint each of these teeth before you get started. That way, if you accidentally get out of sync or you skip one by chance, you can go back and find it. So just go in there and take the time to go end to end painting all those teeth. I think painting those teeth actually takes longer than doing the sharpening. So we're going to hold our file at, at a 60 degree angle. So what I did, ow, what I did is went in there and I, I uh, have my protractor set at 60 degrees. And I'm just going to go in with my pen and draw some lines. And you can draw them as far apart as you think you're going to need. But this just helps me line up my file. You'll find that as you get better at this, you don't need this as much. But certainly when you start, it's nice to be able to have some kind of a reference that's quick and easy to use. Now I've got to go the other way when we do the opposite side, but for right now, I'm getting ready for this one, I'll just go in and do these. 
Now, we need to understand that when we file a cross cut, we have to do every other tooth and then turn around and go the opposite direction. Let me explain. I put an X on the teeth that are set away from me. And I want to go in and I want to file. And when I'm filing, I'm actually filing the face of this tooth that is set away from me. And I'm going to file the top of this tooth that is set toward me. So this is the one that does the, the, the face that actually meets the wood. So just bear that in mind, and you're going to need your magnifiers again so that you can go in there and tell. I'm going to, I can see that this first tooth is bent in that direction, so I'm going to start. I'm going to start right here in this groove. And I also need to make sure that my file is held at the right angle so that I'm doing the face of that tooth at about 15 degrees. So what we can do in this case is set... I've got another protractor. I've got it set for 15 degrees. I'm going to hold that face of the file like so. I've got a popsicle stick, or it's actually a piece of plywood, and I'm going to, I've drilled a hole in the end, and I'm going to stick that on the end of this. Stick that on there a little harder. I keep cutting my, scratching my arm with those teeth. Now I'll check this one more time, make sure that that is indeed on 15 degrees. Uh, that moved on me. There's 15 right there. So if I put that in, that looks to be right. So as long as that's level, I know that I've got the right angle. But eventually you'll just be able to hold that and you'll be able to tell. So get my magnifiers on, start in that first tooth. Now I'm lining up my file with these marks that I put on there so that I know. I've got this stick a little bit too long, so I'm going to go in there and just snap off part of that. Okay, so I'm in that tooth. That's level. I've got my angle right, meaning I'm, I'm in line with my uh, mark that I made. I'm going to do one, two, three passes. I'm going to skip over one tooth, drop into the next one. One, two, three. Skip, drop, one, two, three. One, two, three. Now, folks will tell you, never drag your file back. Well, you know what? I find it easier to drag the file back than to file, lift, drop it in the same spot, file, lift. So if I get half the life out of my file, they're not that expensive. I'm not going to worry about it. Now, I've got to go all the way down. Every once in a while, when I'm close enough to one of these lines, I'll just check myself to make sure that I'm parallel to it. Forgot I have to go three strokes. You want the same amount of wear on each tooth, so make sure you apply the same amount of pressure and the same number of strokes. Okay, so when I've come to the end and I've got to shift it, the fact that I've gone in there and painted those makes it a lot easier for me to find where I stopped and where I need to start. So I'm just going to slide this down so I have the rest of the saw in the file. Get it so that they're sticking up the same amount from one end to the other. And snug that up again. I've got my guide on here so I know where my angle is. There's the last tooth. Find the one that's facing away from me, which is right there. Get my angle right, and ready to go. Okay, now I gotta go around and get ready to do the other side. Now I planed off those marks so it would be a little less confusing. Put that back in, make sure it's projecting the same amount. Keep it low so it doesn't vibrate. Turn this around to 60 degrees in the other direction. And just go back in and redo my guide marks. Okay, now we want 15 degrees. 15 degrees on this side. So we put that on there, hold the file like so. Put our stick on. Push that on 
double check that. That's good. Now, because we painted it, we can easily tell which one we, where we stopped. Line that up. And I'm going to pull this way just so I'm working against the face of that cutting tooth. Okay, shiny spots are gone and that feels really prickly. So let's take that out, put the handle back on. And the ultimate test is to see how well it cuts. All right, we're sawing through a piece of maple. And if everything is good, it'll track, meaning it'll stay right on line. And it'll be a nice, smooth cut. Okay, cut nice and straight, relatively smooth for a handsaw. And there you go, back in business. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the plane and chisel icon below, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our in-person and online workshops.